but we got real problems by the way the federal government funds our child care program. Now, it's pretty interesting to me we're doing this right now when we are having problems with our debt, okay? <coughs> but that being said, uh, we must remember that child care is run by the states, not the federal government. And that's the way it should be. But if my colleagues here get their way, child care facilities would only be eligible for all this new money only if they play by federal rules. Do we want that? We got to really think about that. That means that the federal government uh, will control the curriculum, uh, require child care workers to have a four year degree, priced out the middle class. Ms. Lucas would imposing a four year degree requirement on child care, child care employees, what would it do to the labor market? Well, I, mean, I think we've seen that in, um, in Washington, D.C., where they've um, moved in the direction of rec making these requirements, and it would obviously make it much more expensive. Um, and as a parent, I think it is uh, misguided, because as we all know, when you're looking for care for, um, for especially your youngest kids, what you're really focused on is having somebody who is loving, caring, patient, um, and having a, a four-year degree um, is certainly um, you know, not a necessary requ requirement in that and does needlessly push up costs. Thank you. Uh, what would it do to our <clears throat> religious providers and our private providers? You know, I do think that that's something we should be um, concerned about. Um, and I think it's great when you have um, state-based programs that are, um, you know, basically providing fa uh, families with vouchers um, so they can make those choices. But, you know, more than half of our, my understanding is a little more than half of all daycare slots are um, are faith-based, and we need to make sure of that. I worry when it was looking, when I was looking at the proposals for Build Back Better and the child care provisions in there, um, that it could, that there was a threat that there could be, you um, things that would be inconsistent with faith-based care, and I think that that's something we should all make sure is absolutely protected, because that is really important. The environment, um, parents want to be able to have an environment that they think is supportive of their children. Oh, wow, friends. I have important news to share with you. Leaders of OPEC Plus have just announced that they will be extending oil production cuts. You will likely see a big spike in gas prices across the United States. Lawmakers are planning to pass a new bill that could give you a bonus rebate check. My dearest friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, this coming Friday, I will be announcing more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway, my friends, all you have to do is click in like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My dearest friends, the more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. As fuel prices remain flat, the group of oil producing nations decided today to extend oil production cuts through the year 2024. The OPEC, which stands for the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, held a meeting today. The OPEC described the move as aiming to achieve and sustain a stable oil market and to provide long-term guidance for the market. The group also says that this is in line with the successful approach of being precautious and preemptive. Saudi Arabia, along with Russia and other OPEC oil producers, announced in April that they are planning on cutting 1.16 million barrels per day. This decision came after the oil producing countries had already pledged to cut production of 2 million barrels per day through the end of this year. The National Security Council criticized the move at the time, saying that the administration does not think cuts are advisable at this moment, given market uncertainty. President Biden confirmed that would not be good for Americans. The new cut would likely push up oil prices in the short term. But the impact after that would depend on whether Saudi Arabia decides to extend it. This move is not expected to affect gas prices in the United States, as pump prices have remained flat even after Memorial Day weekend. As of Sunday, the national average of gas prices was $3.55 per gallon. The slump in oil prices has helped United States drivers 
fill their tanks more cheaply, and give consumers worldwide some relief from inflation. The previous cuts gave little lasting boost to oil prices. Brent crude oil climbed as high as eighty-seven dollars per barrel, but has given up its post-cut gains, and been loitering below seventy-five dollars per barrel in recent days. U.S. crude oil has recently dipped below seventy dollars. That has helped U.S. drivers, kicking off the summer travel season, with prices at the pump averaging three dollars and fifty-five cents. That is down one dollars and two cents from one year ago. The U.S. recently replenished its strategic petroleum reserve after Biden announced the largest release from the national reserve in American history last year. While oil producers like Saudi Arabia need revenue to fund their state budgets, they also have to take into account the impact of higher prices on oil-consuming countries. Oil prices that go too high can fuel inflation, sapping consumer purchasing power, and pushing central banks like the U.S. Federal Reserve towards further interest rate hikes that can slow economic growth. Governor Gavin Newsom. Recently signed legislation to implement the strongest state-level oversight and accountability measures on big oil in the nation. Officials have noted that this is bringing transparency to California's oil and gas industry. A representative for the oil industry, which fiercely fought the governor's efforts, said that refiners who operate in the state will closely monitor the development of regulations under the law. And whether the legislature pursues additional bills to address their lingering concerns before deciding whether to mount a legal challenge, Governor Newsom set off a frenzy at the end of September, as the average price of gas at the pump had surged past six dollars per gallon when he called for a windfall tax on oil company profits. Within a week, he also announced that he would open a special legislative session later in the year. To push for the proposal, using a penalty on excess profits to fund a rebate for taxpayers, though many legislators agreed with the governor's assessment that taxes and regulations alone could not explain the steep prices their constituents were paying, his initial plan, which was to set a cap on refiner profits and fine those who exceeded the threshold, stalled for months at the Capitol without any action. Well, my beautiful and most amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Sunday. My dearest friends, thank you very, very much for being part of this community and for joining me here every single day. To say thank you, I will be announcing several winners this coming Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the giveaway, friends. All you have to do is click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My dearish friends, the more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances, my friends, of winning the giveaways. Thank you, and have a wonderful and very blessed week.